So if you own a Tesla Model 3 or a Model Y, you probably know that it does not have a rear screen. The new Tesla Model 3 does. But any previous generation Model 3 and the current generation Model Y doesn't have a rear entertainment display. And Handshow just released this brand new 8.6 inch display for the rear of the Tesla Model 3 and the Model Y. I just got this shipped right to me. And so today we're gonna to be checking this out and installing it in my Tesla Model Y. And the thing is, is that I already have a rear entertainment display in my car. The difference is that this one has a slightly bigger screen and it has adjustable air vents as well, which I found a little bit annoying with the previous generation of this product. Um, we'll compare both of them as well. And the installation of this is actually super easy. Anybody can do it themselves. We'll go through that as well. And a quick review of how the bigger display and the better processor inside this. This has an eight core processor inside it, as well as a larger screen. So let's check it out. Ancho does make some of the best Tesla accessories. You can go to their website and check it out. They have a bunch of cool stuff. Ancho also has provided me with a 20% discount for all my subscribers. So there's a link in the description if you decide to pick this up from Hancho. Hancho, please use that code and get a nice discount for yourself. So it comes with some basic paperwork. Here is the actual display itself. Here are all the cables and tools that you need. Actually, it comes, everything comes packaged inside. So this is the cable harness and they've got two different kinds of cable harness depending on which model of Tesla you have. Whether you have the AMD processor or the Intel processor, this fits both. Uh, it's also got the prying tool, which is the basic tool that you require to remove the existing AC unit. And it's a really simple install, I'll show you guys, but this tool makes sure that you don't damage any parts of the car. And here is the actual display itself. So here you go. This is the latest display. It's got a protective film on top of it right now, as well as the integrated AC vents. Also, you don't lose your USB ports. So both of these are USB ports. This side has the data and this side has the fast charging port, which will support 15 watts on an iPhone and 25 watts on Android devices. So really cool. At the back, you can see this is what plugs into your AC vent and it's fully integrated as well. So all the air gets channeled down to these um, nice vents over here and you can adjust this side to side, but not up and down. So this is the 8.6 inch display. This over here is the previous generation that I had in my car. So you can see the screen is significantly smaller. And also this one has a way better processor inside it. So, you know, this one kind of fit perfectly flush with the car. This one has a bit more of an angle. So we'll go to the car and see how that looks. And also this one has some integrated touch buttons over here that you can see. There's a bunch of buttons that are integrated into the display. These are permanent buttons. The previous one didn't have that. It all had like um, software buttons. So that's a nice touch on this one. You know, with this previous generation, whenever running YouTube and stuff, things were a bit laggy. So I hope that uh, this new generation has fixed all that. This costs around $430. Uh, this one is still available, I think for around 300 and something. But you know, the AC situation with this one, uh, it does have vents inside it. It has vents at the top and the bottom, and it does look cleaner. Uh, at the back, it looks very integrated and very cool. But, you know, the, the thing about it is that, you know, you really want to be able to channel the air left and right. So that's nice. I wish it had up and down controls too, but uh, we'll see how well it cools when we get into the car. Hancho also gives you this USB-C to USB-A adapter. And this device actually has 64 gigs of internal storage inside it, which is really nice because then you don't have to connect this device up to the internet if you want to watch something. If you have some shows downloaded or you can even use the internal memory of this to like say if you have YouTube Premium, download some episodes directly onto the device or on Netflix, you can download, if you have a premium account, you can download it directly to the device. So you don't have to be connected to the internet to actually use this thing. So on my previous device, I'd always kind of connected to my Wi-Fi hotspot for my phone. With this one, you don't really need to, if you want to watch content, if you decide to preload it on the device, if you don't have connectivity or something, this one will still work. So a lot of pros for this one, the larger screen, 
the AC vents, the integrated buttons, the better processor, the internal storage as well. So uh, I'm hoping this is quite a big improvement over the previous generation. So let's go to the car and check it out. Okay guys, we're here in the car. I'm just gonna remove this pry tool over here. So this is super simple to do. In fact, you don't even need the pry tool. You can just kind of pull it out and it will come out over here. Okay, and uh, there's just a couple of wires to disconnect this one in particular. There we go. So this was the previous unit which has now been removed. Okay, so this is kind of how the whole thing works. Um, there are There is a control panel over here. I hope you guys can see that. Let me just show you real quick. So down here is where the car's data port is, this blue one. And you have to put a bypass cable and you have to disconnect the blue one and put the bypass cable and then you get this extra set of cables which you then route through the AC. So all these cables come from here. So you see this wire, it goes through this part of the the back console and comes over here. It's, it's very simple. There's a lot of wires here uh, because this uh, back um, unit can control the seats as well and move them in front if you like but um, I don't really use that feature so I don't have any point for all these extra cables so we're just going to leave that as is we're just interested in the data cable and the power cable and that's it we got one in and the other one and I'm getting power wow this looks uh, quite a bit better than the previous one uh, in terms of size it's definitely a bit bigger and definitely the airflow is better as well. I can already feel it, even though it's not fully installed. So this installation for me was like literally two minutes because I already had the cables. But as I said, it's very simple. You just open up that bottom panel, you replace the cable with this one. And the main important ones that uh, you need are the black ones and, uh, and this one. And you should have everything that you need, including the power for the USB and and the data from the car to control things like the air conditioning, the heated seats. Uh, let me just walk you through all the features of this, which is pretty cool. Let me just properly install this and then we'll talk about the features. Okay, first impressions is that the cooling is significantly better on this one than on the previous one. I mean, uh, you know, the direction of the blast was quite okay, but most of the blast was coming to the center person. And in this, you can like change the direction. So that's way better. So as you can see over here, you have directional controls. And right now I'm feeling the blast coming right to me. So people who are not sitting in the middle as well can get a good air conditioning experience over here. Okay, so here you can see the display. I love these new buttons over here because these are permanent. So, and they're lit as well. So at night, I think you'd be able to see them quite clearly. Here you can turn on heating for the seats. Uh, it's not something I wanna do right now, but you could if you like to. Uh, this is the AC controls and you can put on dog mode or camp mode uh, or child lock it over here. So uh, that, you know, children at the back. So here you'd see the seat controls if, uh, if you had it. You can even open the glove compartment from here, pretty cool. I don't know why you'd want to open the glove compartment from the rear, but you can, uh, which is interesting. You could also control the seats and they have a massage function as well over here, which if you control the seats, it would like uh, use the lumbar support to like give you a massage function, which is quite interesting. Uh, here's the music uh, controls. So if something's playing on the screen in the front, you can control the music from here, skip tracks, change the volume which is nice for rear passengers to be able to control that. Here is the app selection. So anything you can pretty much do on the Android store, you can do it over here. So uh, we have access to the Play Store as well as some inbuilt applications like YouTube and Netflix. Local video will um, you know, go to the local storage on this device and play video. And man, this is a, a 1080p screen and the quality looks actually really good, better than the one that I had before. This is 1080p, oh, it's playing in 4K. 
not bad at all. I mean, it's quite, quite an impressive display. Like the colors look great and, uh, you know, the resolution looks great. And this display is way more responsive than what I had previously. Now do I get back? Okay. So this is what's inbuilt. You can always connect a USB or have a combined view, which is way nicer than what we had before. So this is a really cool local videos is something I really appreciate that they've added to the system. So here, if you go into Wi-Fi settings, you can see that I've connected it to my 15 Pro Max over personal hotspot. And now when we go back here into YouTube, there we go. This is my Sonos video. Should I skip it or make some money? Skip it. <laughs> so a couple of months ago, I decided to pick up this 98-inch Hisense TV. I did a whole video about it. I'll leave a link up over here. I was considering upgrading my sound system for a while because I really wanted Dolby mm. at most. I did have it hooked up to a... So let's max out the volume. So this uh, system is supposed to have better audio capabilities. There's speakers back here which should give you a louder sound than what we had on the previous device. Okay, so impressions like the sound system on this is all right. It's not as great as I thought it would be. They were uh, in their marketing material they sent me, they said that this has a way better speaker set. It is better than the previous version, but it's still not great. You'd probably want to connect this to the Tesla sound system, which you can totally do. So you can connect it to the Tesla Bluetooth system and it'll play whatever content is over the whole car speaker. And the cool thing is in the settings, there's an option to even adjust the rear sound. So it'll send more sound to the rear speakers of the Tesla, which is great so that, you know, people in the back can listen to things more clearly. But in a pinch, I think this is good enough. Like most of the time on the previous screen, my daughter would be watching Bluey on the back screen and she would be uh, listening over the, the speakers of this and I'd be listening to something else in the front and it was good enough for her. And in this one, it is a bit better. Plus you can connect Bluetooth headphones to this thing if you want, which is probably the best way to go about it. Like if you want somebody in the back to like really enjoy what they're watching, I would suggest going for the Bluetooth headphones. Anyway, let's quickly go over some of the extra features of this. But overall, I'm really happy with the screen size, the screen clarity. Uh, you know, it's 1080p, the colors look really great for watching content. Now, this display has many apps pre-built into it. So you can see the music app, uh, the video app and uh, many others. And it also has CP Link and Android Auto, which means these are this is CarPlay and Android Auto if you want to use it at the back. There's also the Car Info, which we just saw previously. Video settings. Wow, they have a full EQ system over here. Allows you to... That's interesting. You can modify the sound signature of this. Oh. That is super cool. And of course, you could go to the Play Store and download a bunch of games. If you have an Android system, you can download games on this thing. They should work. Most of the games should work on this because it is just like an Android tablet. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, if you want CarPlay or Android in your backseat, you have that too. All right, guys, so that's going to be it for this video. If you liked it, hit that like button, leave me a comment, subscribe to watch more videos like this. And if you guys want to buy this rear screen display, there is a link in the description. You will get 20% off. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.